Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we have seen one dimension of uh, cryptographic algorithms, which is through key, right? So we have seen symmetric, asymmetric, as well as keyless. We know with the key of uh, with the symmetric key, what is the challenge and what is the advantage? With asymmetric, what is the challenge? What is the advantage? And there is a keyless. The purpose of keyless is altogether different that we will discuss later. Now the point is the third dimension is how the plain text is, how the plain text is arranged. So we, we said, you know, there is a way that you can give the input. There is a way that you can give the input called apple in the sense directly as a word. Then there is a alphabet by alphabet, right? So that means what? Either you give a word as such, right or you take the alphabet by alphabet. So this we call that as this way, okay. What is the other dimension is? The second dimension of the cryptography algorithms is the how, how plain text how plain text is arranged. So how the plain text state is arranged? There are two ways. One way is that you divide the plain text into the blocks. Okay. That means I have the plain text. Generally, plain text will be of, uh, we are giving the examples as apple, cat, rat. These are the general typical examples in the classroom. Do we see that, you know, always your plain text will be of one letter or one alphabet or two alphabets? plain text would be of any size, right? So the point is the way how we organize the plain text is number one as the block. So you take the lengthy plain text, okay? So that means imagine that I have a lengthy plain text. This is my whole plain text. What we do is we divide it into blocks, okay? We divide into blocks. So take an example, I am dividing my plain text into a block of size say 64 bit. So this is one 64 bit block. So this is block one. This is another 64 bit block two and so on. So I have some n blocks. So what I did, I took my whole plain text. I took my whole plain text. I divided it into a fixed length size blocks. So for my encryption algorithm, what goes input? When I say I am giving plain text as input. So that means imagine I am saying C is equal to E of P comma K. Say I am taking symmetric encryption. My P is my whole plain text. This is whole is my P. Okay. So is it that a whole P I can give it to the algorithm? No. What I do is I take block by block. So my encryption algorithm, this encryption algorithm takes first the first block. So take an example, the B1, this is block 1, this is block 2 and so on, right? Are you able to follow? So the encryption algorithm takes plain text in the form of, in the form of blocks. So each time it operates on one block takes the block and apply the key, produce the cipher text. Are you able to follow? So such type of encryption algorithms are called block ciphers. They are called block ciphers. The reason is you are taking the plain text, dividing it into blocks, encryption algorithm takes the blocks. So what happen is this way, take my block, apply the encryption algorithm, okay, and I get cipher text, right? Then take the encryption algorithm, take this block, what key I will use? Same key, the K, K only. So it goes. So what is my cipher text? 
this is the cipher text of this block this is the cipher text of this block and so on is that clear is that clear now have you heard the current uh, term called blockchain yes, what is that blockchain actually is or i will tell you uh, the principle behind it is what happen is i take this block output called the cipher text that goes as input for the encryption algorithm encryption algorithm of second block so that means my first block output is influencing the cipher of second block so this is called chaining right this is a chaining that we will see later but you know but you keep this point in mind because you know since the blocks have come i just put this point okay but nevertheless now the point is this is my cipher of block 1 this is the cipher of block 2 and so on so this is called block ciphers there is another cipher called stream ciphers what is the input to the algorithm it is the stream what do you mean by stream it is alphabet by alphabet i don't take blocks so what i do you take the whole plain text my plain text alphabets p1 p2 so on say pm these are all the alphabets of my alphabets of my plain text what the algorithm take take the plain text alphabets it goes alphabet by alphabet so producing cipher alphabets c1 c2 so on cm but for that purpose what is needed is your key what is key key is also having some alphabets so you what it takes is you know this key one k2 the key alphabets it takes and produces the cipher alphabets so it's a stream so block ciphers and stream ciphers now which would be more advantages which would be more advantages no we saw we saw in case of keys for symmetric you saw some advantages and disadvantages disadvantages are challenges for asymmetric you saw some advantages and challenges now tell me whether block ciphers are good or stream ciphers are good keep that point in your mind we will discuss okay so this is one way of handling it right are you able to follow so we saw key wise we saw how the plain text is organized there is another dimension third dimension what is the third dimension technique that means how plain text is processed how plain text is processed what is the second one how plain text is arranged third one is how plain text is processed right so for that purpose you have this way so the third dimension is how plain text is processed now i have a plain text right like apple i need uh, some cipher text say x p t l v right how do i get it this is the cipher text so this is my p this is my p this is my c how do i get it so that means if you notice in place of a what i got in place of p i got p in this place of p i got t in this place of l i got l in this place of e i got v so how do i get these cipher alphabets 
it is the encryption algorithm. So the encryption algorithm process either operates this way. Number one, you do the substitution. Okay. What is meant by substitution? See, if you look at the alphabets, how many alphabets are there in the language English? Okay. My plain text will have what type of alphabets? This 26 alphabets only, no? And what about my cipher alphabets? 26 only, right? You know, if you notice, this is the plain text, this is the cipher text. What are those alphabets of the cipher text? Is it uh, some other language? Are they from different language? Your plain text language, cipher text language, both are same. That means alphabets are same. Now the question is, which alphabet, that means from the cipher alphabet, how this alphabet has come? So either that should come, there are two ways. One is through substitution, the other is through another process called permutation. Permutation, that means in the substitution, plain text alphabet gets substituted with another alphabet, another alphabet of, another alphabet of same language, okay. So that means I have 26 alphabets in the English, A must be getting an alphabet from A to Z, any one alphabet. B may be getting alphabet from A to Z. So that is called substitution. Are you able to follow? One alphabet of the plain text gets substituted with another alphabet of the language, which is the same language. Sorry? Same language is necessary. Okay. It is necessary means all the algorithms, whatever we are discussing, whether it is uh, any language, any algorithm we take, Typically, your alphabets comes from the same language, okay, for the substitution purpose. Necessary means not necessary if you way your algorithm is structured, okay. So, what we are going to discuss now for substitution purpose, okay, let, let us take a Caesar cipher to any other ciphers. Typically, what they do, your alphabets of the language taken get substituted with alphabets of the language. Now, it is like this. Imagine I am mapping A with, if my algorithm says, you substitute A with alphabet of some language, algorithm supports, then no worries. If I am substituting A with 1, okay b with 2, a to z, 0 to 25, right? I am encoding them. Now, I am representing alphabets with numbers. Yes, I can represent. What is that we are talking about in the cryptography is the algorithms that map the language to the language of the alphabets of the language. Now, it is this. I am again, we repeat, you take 26 alphabets, get substituted with 26 alphabet, any of the alphabets. That is one approach. The other approach is permutation. What is permutation? Now, I want to encrypt the word apple. Again, let us take apple. What I did, I got the cipher text this way. What is the cipher text I got is? E L P P A. What I did? I have just done the reverse process. We may call it as reverse or how what I am going to call is? I am going to call it as permute. What is that permutation I did? I did the permutation in the sense changed the positions of the alphabets, changed the 
positions of the alphabets. Now the question is, is it that I changed the positions of the alphabets of the language or alphabets of the word? Alphabets of the word. That keep that point in mind. So permutation means I am playing with the alphabets that are there in my word. Similarly, you take the string. Now in this case word, imagine I have the, uh, you know, the sentence. Play with the alphabets that are there in the sentence. Right? What I do? I permute the positions of the alphabets. So that is how I produce my, that is the way I produce my cipher text. And hence your algorithms could be substitution ciphers or permutation ciphers. Right? So the algor encryption algorithms could be permutation ciphers or substitution ciphers. Right? Are you able to follow? Now, so, so far we said your encryption algorithms are symmetric encryption, asymmetric encryption, then what are the others? Block based encryption, stream based encryption, substitution, permutation. Right? So that means when you are asking and you are looking at the any encryption algorithm, is it a block based symmetric encryption algorithm? What does it mean? My encryption algorithm is block based symmetric encryption algorithm. What does it mean? Number one, communicating parties will have the same key for encryption purpose and decryption purpose and the plain text is organized in the way of blocks and it is a substitution cipher. Right? So my encryption algorithm performs substitution operations on the plain text. That is one thing. And it organizes the plain text in the form of the blocks. That is block cipher. And it is symmetric based. Okay? When I say symmetric, it is the same key. Now, let us take the permutation cipher. Okay. The way I arranged my alphabets, the way I arranged my alphabets forms, the way I arranged my alphabets forms, okay, any other answer? Okay, it is this. The way I arranged the alphabets my first alphabet has gone to the last alphabet. The last one has come to the first one. This positions, the positions where which alphabet is going to which place, that forms the key. Okay. That means the first alphabet is going to the, say I am just, imagine my first alphabet is going to the fourth position. My second alphabet is going to third position. My, uh, my second, al imagine that uh, my third alphabet is say from 1, my fourth alphabet is 5, my fifth alphabet is 2. Okay. If this is the, I am calling it as the key, for Apple, what would be the cipher alphabet, cipher text? So what is the key says? fourth one is my first cipher alphabet. What is the fourth one? L. Are you able to follow? So I am saying key is 4, 3, 5, 1, 5, 2. So my fourth alphabet of the plain text is my first cipher alphabet. What is my 4 is uh, L. What is my 3 is P. What is my 1 is? What is the fifth one? E. This is my cipher text and what forms the key? The way I permuted, the way I permuted the alphabet forms key, 
right? The way the permutation happens is the key. For which cipher? Huh? Permutation cipher, right? Permutation cipher. Are you able to follow? So, number one, if my key is symmetric or asymmetric, number two, my text is organized as block wise or stream wise and the operations I am performing. What are the operations? Substitution, permutation. Right. Remember, substitution when I am doing, I am actually trying to achieve a property called confusion. I am trying to achieve a property or an objective called confusion because the attacker, the interceptor should get confused. This particular cipher alphabet has come from what is the substitution operation, the confusion. Okay. So, the goal of substitution is, the goal of substitution is confusion. The goal of permutation is diffusion. The goal of permutation is diffusion. What is meant by diffusion? Look at apple. My apple has become LPAEP. What happened? The alphabets are diffused, right? So, through permutation, I am getting diffusion, that means scattering my alphabets. I do not know which position has got what alphabet, the attacker and the goal of confusion, the goal of substitution is, goal of substitution is confusion. Are you able to follow? So, these are the things that you, you guys need to know in terms of cryptography algorithms. So, any cryptography algorithm, you should be able to identify, number one, is it through symmetric or asymmetric or keyless? It is it block based ciphers or a stream based cipher or operations it is performing is it a substitution and permutation. Remember all modern encryption algorithms, all modern encryption algorithms, they do not simply follow only substitution or permutation. They do not follow only substitution or permutation. Now tell me which is actually See, we are able to achieve two objectives called confusion and diffusion, which is little robust among these uh, two approaches, substitution or permutation. Huh? Why? Why substitution is robust when compared with uh, uh, permutation? Characters? So, when you look at the substitution, a can get substituted with 26 alphabets, A can sub get substituted with A or other 25 alphabets. In an ideal scenario, you can ignore A, A gets substituted with A, any alphabet can get substituted with the 25 other alphabets, right. That is the substitution aspect. Look at the permutation aspect. When you look at the permutation, what happening with Apple, A gets substituted with all other alphabets in the word or that sentence, right. So, the, your space is getting minimized in terms of permutation, but the point is that you cannot ignore permutation because you have to achieve diffusion. So, all modern ciphers perform both substitution and diff, uh, permutation. All modern ciphers have both. You cannot say that no, my cipher is only uh, substitution or my cipher is only permutation. I know you cannot, okay. So, that way. So, is that clear the way the cryptography algorithms are operated? Next, all slides are all that, okay. So, uh, right. 
so we skip these things uh, yeah so look at this uh, look at this uh, image uh, we said symmetric crypto systems wherein which the key is shared between the sender and receiver okay now when it comes to asymmetric is the key is shared no look at this you are using one key for encryption purpose of course i have written it as k1 k2 but now you are getting it as ke and kd key used for encryption purpose key used for decryption purpose where in which ke is not equal to kd right so you are using one key for encryption purpose and altogether different key for decryption purpose right this is a symmetric system yes Which one? The binary operation, the add operation, XOR operation. It comes under substitution or uh, no, it it is this. No, it is this. The XR operation, what you are talking about, you should ask this question this way, not that way. The question should be this. What is that? Is it through stream or block? Okay. The what that your point is that you are doing and or any operation you take. What you do? It is a bitwise operation, right? Bitwise operation. Typically, bitwise operations are stream based. Stream based. Right? And another thing, it is a logical operation. It is not through substitution. The XR, let us take XR. 0, 0. 0, 1. 1, 0, 1, 1. What is the output? Is it through substitution? No. Is it through permutation? No. What is that? It is basically a logical operation. Now, you ask the question this way. Yes. And or XR, these are all logical operations. Now, substitution and permutations, are there any logical in that aspect, mathematical operations? No. I said I am substituting in the pace of A L. Right? What is the logic there? Is there any mathematical logic? No mathematical logic. Right? It is all depending upon the position key. The way I defend the key. Now you say, sir, I will follow a different key. My key is this one. What is that? My key is this 5, 2, 1. 4, 3. Then what happens? You get altogether a different cipher. Right. So, based on the key, your output is changing. Now, look at your logical operations. Whether they changes? No, right. They are deterministic, right. In the sense, whenever you have 0, 0, whenever you have 0, 1, depending on the logical operation, your output is fixed. Now here, depending on the key, the output varies, right? So, you know, so this is about asymmetric crypto system, the other approach. So this I will skip, okay, keyless ciphers, this, okay. Now, before you enter into the algorithms, you need to also understand about the cryptanalysis. What is cryptanalysis? We said in the very beginning of the terminology, the, the science of breaking the secret codes, right? So, how do I break, right? You know, we saw a few minutes back that, you know, these guys, sender is sending a message, the receiver is receiving it, EV is trying to break, okay? EV is trying to break. Now, let us go. So, we are talking about now cryptanalysis. What is cryptanalysis you guys said? So, I want to break the codes. Okay. So, to break the encryption, you again let us take this. So, you have Alice here, Bob here uh, and this is your 
open channel and ev is sitting here okay now a p is encrypted with the k in the uh, so you got c right and then what bob is doing is decryption over c with the help of k gets the p right now what is this guy is doing if if is trying to intercept interception is always there what is that ev is trying to do is to break break what here break what huh? break the cipher text when i say he breaks the cipher text c eve what eve gets plain text that is one of one one dimension of breaking what is the another dimension of breaking you, he gets the key when he gets the key that is the worst attack because he can break all other subsequent communications also right so when in terms of breaking breaking only that particular cipher text is you know is there is a damage but breaking that whole key aspect also is the worst aspect now the point is when you can break it so we say cryptanalysis is about breaking okay now generally outside you know the thieves go and then do the burglary right will just like that they go inside and take the amount take the items and they go away what they do they gather some information right can just somebody just like that go and snatch away the information and go no right they will do lot of analysis what is that analysis they try to gather the information who is there who is not there when they are coming when they are leaving who is there at the house whether there are any older elder people whether there are any you know young people so that you know there are any vulnerable points right so they want to gather the vulnerable related information so cryptanalysis happens with the help of number 1 amount of amount of information available to attacker how much is the amount of information available to the attacker huh? it is the cryptanalysis is based on amount of information available to the attacker now the point is immediately what is that available to the attacker cipher text so what is the information available to the attacker number 1 cipher text what is the other information that attacker would know hmm? what is the other information attacker would uh, would know name of the algorithm okay oh uh, yeah yeah we'll come to that the, let us see this what he said the algorithm that is used algorithm that is used for encryption purpose how the attacker would know the, what is the algorithm used for encryption purpose how the attacker would know what is the algorithm plain text means anyway it is being sent in the communication channel and we are saying that the communication channel is open so he snatches right you know so he listens to the communication channel grabs c okay so he takes the c now what about that algorithm it is this in security design in the designing the security systems there is a philosophy called open design okay any security system should be of open design okay there are various design aspects for the system people call it as open design okay any system the security aspects design should be open are you able to follow any doubt you are getting design should be open security system design should be open that is the design principle itself 
Why? Why it should be open? It should supposed to be secret. You are saying I will keep it open. Any answer? Very good. Any other answer? Sorry? Trust purpose. Any other answer? See, it is this. You know, I, I want to do an uh, net banking. Okay. I wanted a net banking feature. Now, I asked my bank, hey, I want to, you to enable me net banking. They say, yes, we will enable you net banking. But I am asking a question. Tell me, how secure is your net banking feature? What is that they should tell? No, no, sir, our bank is uh, online transactions are all secure. Would you accept that uh, uh, abstract statement? What do you expect? Oh, that's fine. But I want to know how do, how do you make your uh, transaction secure? He says, sir, we make our transactions secure because we use a public key encryption algorithm such as RSA with 1024 bit. Okay, so that means you are using a key sizes of length 1024 bit and your encryption algorithms are all RSA based. So that means your, your transactions are secure. Now, is that is the information that is should be informed to the customers. Otherwise, customers, why they will come? How do I know? Can you inform the customer saying that, no, 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 sir, my algorithms are all robust algorithms. My key sizes are very long key sizes. You should tell the customers. Now, that forms the open design. The system should be open, number one. As he mentioned, when the system is open, more and, people, more, and more people would verify whether the design aspect is robust or not, number one. Number two is also to give the customers trust that, yes, my algorithm, my, my transactions are secure because there is a robust algorithm. Now, tell me, RSA algorithm is there in the public domain? Steps of the algorithm is known to everybody. Is it that algorithm is not known to anybody? Everybody knows that algorithm. It is there in the books, literature everywhere. Now, the question is, when the design is open, what is that you protect? How do you protect? Design is open. Cipher text is there available. What is that you are asking for uh, this one? Point is, there is one element called the key that is supposed to be secret. If I am able to protect my key, if my design is open, if my design is open, the principle called Kerkhoff's principle, everything should be kept open except the security of the security strength of the system lies with the point that your algorithm should be robust, secure. Everything is known to the attacker except. So, in that aspect, what is the information available to the attacker by default is, by default, what is that available to the attacker? Number one, ciphertext. Number two, algorithm. So, this is the piece of information available to the attacker. Now, the point is with these two pieces of information, imagine if the attacker makes an attack, it is called cipher text only attack. Cipher text only. What is the amount of information available to the attacker? Cipher text algorithm. Anybody can get it. So, getting this piece of information is easy or tough? Easy. But with only this pieces of information, making the attack is very difficult until and unless there are professionals, okay, who are highly trained, skilled professionals. It is very difficult to make the attack with the very limited information that is available. What is the limited information? Cipher text and algorithm. Sir, along with these two aspects, now attacker comes to know some more information. What is that? I am talking about 
these two pieces, one and two, already attacker knows. In addition to that, attacker comes to know about, that means attacker knows plain text and corresponding cipher text pairs. He knows some plain text. He knows some plain text and for that some corresponding cipher text also he knows. So what is that information? 1, 2, that means the algorithm, cipher text, algorithm and some combinations. What are the combinations? Some P1, C1, some P2, C2, not all combinations. How do you know? Eve knows that Alice is sending the message to Bob. Okay. Eve knows that Eve knows ciphertext, Eve knows the algorithm. With that information, Eve is making the attack, it is called ciphertext only attack. Now, Eve knows that who is sending the messages? Who is sending the message? Alice is sending the message to Bob. In that message, imagine what would be the typically first set of message, say take an example, plain text, dear, dear Bob. Imagine Eve knows that any message that Eve Alice sends to Bob, it will start with dear Bob. The corresponding ciphertext in the message would be equivalent to the ciphertext of the messages dear and Bob. So that from that he gets right. Are you able to follow? Making some sense? I am talking about next level of information available to the Eve. What is the next first level? Attacker Eve knows only ciphertext in the algorithm. Attacker don't know who he is sending, to whom he is sending, nothing other information. That is the first level. What is the second level? Attacker knows ciphertext in the algorithm. On top of that, attacker also knows that Alice is sending the message. To Bob, the message is being sent. And also, the information that whenever Alice is sending the message, Alice would send like this and corresponding cipher text is this, not all combinations. Some pieces he knows. So if that, with that, if the attacker is making, it is called known plain text attack. Are you able to follow? Are you able to follow? So like this, we have certain we have certain categories of attacks. What are the categories? Number one, cipher text only attack, known plain text attack. What is the other one? Chosen plain text attack. That means attacker chooses some plain text and he knows their corresponding cipher text. Now you may ask, sir, how the attacker would know? How the attacker would know? That is where the skill of the attacker comes in grabbing the information. That is where the skill of the attacker comes. Next, choose and cipher text attack. And finally, choose and text attack. These are the various categories of the attacks. Now, if you see the chronological order from top to bottom, from top to bottom, amount of information available is becoming less or more. So here the amount of information is less, the amount of information available is more. Now information, information is less here and information is more there. Now difficulty of making the attack from top to bottom. Difficulty of making the attack. Tough to easy or easy to tough? Tough to easy. The reason is you have less information and here you have more information. But the point is grabbing that information is the tough. But once you do that, your attack becomes easy. Somebody said that they have followed the Horowitz Forozan book. Who said that? So the book has an excellent, uh, you know, the illustrations of the ciphertext 
only attack, known plain text attack, chosen plain text attack. So chosen safer text attack. I think uh, you know after the sessions, please go back and then check. So there are two standard books that one should uh, read for the courses of cryptography and safer text uh, uh, network securities. William Stallings and Forozon. Other than that, there are so many books. You know, uh, one should read actually, but but these are the two basic books. Okay, so I just uh, I just skip them. So you you guys have to uh, understand this. Cipher text only attack, known plain text attack, chosen plain text, chosen cipher text, chosen text. It is all about obtaining more information. The more that information that is available to the attacker, then the attack becomes easy, easy, right? Right. Now, the point is, you need to understand one more important uh, parameter aspect dimension called number one, any algorithm should come under unconditionally secured algorithm, computationally secure algorithm. Algorithm can be unconditionally secure and computationally secure, right? What is unconditionally secure? See, you are saying this encryption algorithm, okay? Encryption algorithm called E. E could be symmetric or asymmetric, E could be block or stream, but we are saying both E can perform substitution permutation operations, all that fine. My algorithm should not be breakable under any condition. No one can break my encryption algorithm called unconditionally secure algorithm okay? or unconditionally secure ciphers. No matter it is amount of information available to the attacker, my cipher cannot, should not be breakable. What is computationally breakable, computationally secure? These are the two conditions I am saying. First one, cost of breaking cipher exceeds value of encrypted information. That is first condition. What is the second one? Time required to break the cipher exceeds useful lifetime of the information. If my cipher is satisfying these two criteria, then I call that as computationally secure. Computationally secure. Computationally secure. What is that? What is that? Computationally secure, can you close the door? So, what is that we are saying? Unconditionally secure, computationally secure. Unconditionally secure means my cipher should not be breakable. What is the other criteria? Computationally secure. What is meant by computationally secure? If my cipher is providing the security till the lifetime of my information. What is meant by lifetime of information? Imagine I keep telling this uh, uh, example. What is the lifetime of information? So, take an example there is a question paper. What is the lifetime of the question paper? Till the exam is conducted, if I am able to secure my question paper, that is fine, right? So, for that purpose, do I need to have a uh, unconditionally secure cipher? I do not require. If my encryption algorithm is protecting my document till the li till its lifetime, I am sitting the question paper now and the exam is going to be conducted in another 30 days time. If the encryption algorithm is able to provide security till this 30 days or maybe 35 days, that is fine for me. What does it mean? Imagine somebody is making a brute force attack. What is the brute force attack? 
try all possible combinations of the keys right so imagine if they are trying for 40 days if by trying for 40 days if it is breakable that encryption algorithm is okay for me right because i need to protect it only for 30 days i don't require a unconditionally secure cipher right so that is what it is meant by that the second statement what is the first one cost of breaking the cipher exceeds the value of encrypted information see one is about lifetime another one is about the cost both are considered to design computationally secure now the point is when it comes to any of the encryption algorithms you have learned or you are really learning we don't have unconditionally secure encryption algorithms they are all what computationally secure algorithms what are all the algorithms that what we have we are computationally secure algorithms that means that means whatever the lifetime that you want till that particular lifetime they can provide security not that at any time they cannot be breakable are you able to follow so so this parts we discussed now let us go to the some ciphers okay let us go to the ciphers first cipher caesar cipher caesar cipher which is also called mono alphabetic cipher it is also called mono alphabetic cipher okay we will see what is meant by mono alphabetic cipher and all so the ciphers what they do is the relationship between a symbol in the plain text to a symbol in the cipher text is always one to one okay always one to one that means i take alphabets of the language a to z what are the cipher alphabets a to z i map a one to one relationship between my plain alphabets to the cipher alphabets i call that as mono alphabetic cipher my a is getting substituted with say p a is mapped with p b is substituted with say k so always b is substituted with k so b is mapped with k so some mapping i have done but it is one to one mapping so when i say one to one wherever you find a you get only that mapped alphabet that's called one to one okay so the best example for such alphabet is the such cipher is the caesar cipher look at this this is my plain alphabets these are my cipher alphabets what is that is done a is substituted with d because a is mapped with d b is substituted with e okay like this i have created a mapping one to one mapping between my plain alphabets to my cipher alphabets are you able to follow now what i did for that what i did was i just represented all these 26 alphabets from 0 to 25 and i represented that crypto system as c is equal to p plus 3 mod 26 what is p there my plain text numerical equivalent my plain text numerical equivalent what is the numerical equivalent of a as per this 0 that's what it is mentioned 0 to 25 a is mapped a is numerical equivalent is 0 z numerical equivalent is 25 now how i am going to encrypt it c is equal to p plus 3 mod 26 c is equal to p plus 3 mod 26 right so what i am going to put in this place of p 
टू एनक्रिप्ट माई ये सो इट इज लाइक दिस ओके सो इमेजिन आई वॉन्ट टू एनक्रिप्ट ये सो वॉट आई डू इज वॉट इज द साइफर आल्फाबेट आई गेट सी इज इक्वल टू पी न्यूमेरिकल इक्वल इज जीरो प्लस थ्री मॉड ट्वेंटी सिक्स थ्री मॉड ट्वेंटी सिक्स थ्री वॉट इज द थर्ड आल्फाबेट सो दिस इज यू नो आई एम गोइंग टू हैव जीरो वन टू थ्री सो डी आर यू एबल टू फॉलो सो थ्री मॉड ट्वेंटी सिक्स इज थ्री वॉट इज थ्री हियर सो जीरो वन टू थ्री थ्री इज डी दैट इज हाउ डी हैज कम दैट इज हाउ डी हैज कम Similarly, how you got E for B? B numerical equivalent is B numerical equivalent is one one plus three mod twenty six. What is one plus three mod twenty six? Is four. When the four is the numerical value, what is its corresponding alphabet? Zero one two three. Four. What is four? E. Are you able to follow? So you write the crypto system as C is equal to P plus three mod twenty six. Why you need mod twenty six? The reason is. Now imagine, up to W there is no problem. When I have my plain alphabet X. what i should substitute what is the alphabet that is three characters next to that nothing until and unless i rotate so i have to rotate back how do i rotate back put the mod operator you get the reminder so go there to that particular corresponding numerical value pick that alphabet so always you perform modular Uh, mod twenty six there. Are you able to understand? So now, what is this uh, uh, system? C is equal to P plus three mod twenty six. Now, where is K here? What is what? Where is K here? What is K here? The K is this three. what is this three i said i am shifting from the current location to three characters next to that why only three i can make any shifts plus 4 plus 5 so i can make it generalized as like this c is equal to p plus k mod 26 are you able to follow now ye in in the case of uh, normal cipher caesar cipher p plus 3 mod 26 a will get substituted with a will get substituted with which alphabet d z will get substituted with c normal normal caesar cipher p plus 3 i am choosing key value as 3 okay that means wherever i have z in my plain alphabet what alphabet comes c because it is one to one relation what is one to one relation wherever z is there you get substituted with c are you able to follow it's one to one relation and and it is also called mono alphabetic relation mono alphabetic cipher the reason is one alphabet is getting substituted with the same other alphabet whenever it repeats right so it's called caesar cipher this one so look at the plain text here meet me after the toga party okay m gets substituted with p right you see here m gets substituted with p so wherever m is there it is the same p got substituted m p m p okay similarly e u c E E H H, so one to one relation. So you get the same alphabet. This is a mono alphabetic substitution, right? So now the point is when 
when this cipher is used, what is the challenge? So it is very easy to cryptanalyze. The reason is performing brute force attack is very easy. Okay. Now tell me, I write this one. What is the general Caesar cipher rule? C is equal to P plus K mod 26. This is the Caesar cipher, right? Okay. Right. Now, how many key values I get? What is the what is the uh, what is the general one? C is equal to P plus 3 mod 26, right? How many key values I can choose? I can choose k is equal to 0. Can I choose it or not? If I choose what will happen? I will get the same text. Right? I get the same. So, totally you have 26 keys. Or if you say that no, 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 I will not substitute k value as 0, you will have 25. That means you put k 1 to 25, try with pen and paper, somebody can easily break. Best case is of the attack is with k is equal to 1, you get the cipher, you can get the plain text. With k is equal to 25, worst case is possible, right? So, you need to understand one thing here. When somebody says, what is the key space of the algorithm? For Caesar cipher, what is the key space? The number of possible keys that have, that come is the key space of the algorithm. So, for Caesar cipher, the key space is 25. So, tell me for an algorithm to become robust and secure, whether it should have a more key space or less key space? More key space. That is the reason why people will say that, look, we are adopting 1024-bit key. Then tell me, if my key length is 1024-bit, how many possible combinations of keys I get? Huh? 2 to the power 1024. Do you know there was some illustration? Imagine if you say 2000, 1024, you know how many number of numbers you get? Number of numbers you get for 2000, 2000 2, 2 to the power 1024, it is almost equivalent to, you know, if you dump all those numbers in the form of mountains, almost 15 mount average should be there. How many? 15 mount, 15 mount average size numbers you will see there. If you have 2 to the power 1024. Now you think of making a brute force attack on such type of a large key space. Right. So, nevertheless, you are supposed to keep small key space or large key space? Huh? Large key space. Right. That is one point. The second point you need to understand from the algorithm is number one, you are making one to one mapping, right? One to one mapping when you do, forget about this uh, key space, there is certain characteristics of any natural language. Means, you take English, is it that the frequency of usage of the alphabets of the language is uniform across the alpha alphabets? Huh? No, right? Out of 26, is it that all 26 alphabets in the dictionary, in a dictionary of words, is it that all alphabets are uniformly used? No. There are certain natural language characteristics which call as frequencies of letters, wherein which E is the most frequently used word. Now, when, when, you, when you have in the plain, uh, when you have in the plain uh, text, obviously E will come more. And you will see in the cipher alphabets, one cipher alphabet is repeatedly coming. What could be that plain alphabet for that? E, right? This is for single alphabets. Matter do not end there. You have diagrams. What is diagrams? You see in the any language, two, two alphabets come together. Similarly, three, three alphabets come together frequently. That means, if you see in the cipher alphabets, 
some combinations of alphabets coming together, what they could be? What they could be? They could be the plain alphabets that come together, right? That everybody knows with regard to based on the language that is there. So people adopt the uh, this one, so the attacks. So monoalphabetic ciphers are uh, are very far from secure. Uh, there is another cipher called uh, Atbash cipher. What this cipher is, it is very fairly simple. You see, tell me what it has done. This is the plain text alphabets. This is the cipher alphabets. Cipher alphabets. What it has done? Reverse. Just reverse. Mono or uh, is it mono only, right? One to one mapping only, right? A is mapped with? B is mapped with? Y. So, it's called Atbash cipher, which was taken from the Hebrew literature. Somebody who was writing some Hebrew literature, they wanted to write it in secretly. So, they adopted this cipher, which is again a simple example for substitution cipher number one. It's a mono alphabetic cipher, right? So, it's called Atbash cipher. Again, whatever we discussed the Caesar cipher, it is also called as additive cipher. What is the reason? What is the reason? You write that as C is equal to P plus 3 mod 26. So, what is the operation you have performed? Right. So, we need to understand this aspect. I write that as C is equal to P plus K mod 26. This is my encryption. What is the decryption? P is equal to C minus K mod 26. That is the decryption of Caesar cipher. Right? And this is also example for additive cipher. Additive cipher. Okay. Now the uh, I call it as additive cipher because I am saying P plus 3, P plus K mod 26. You need to understand this. How I, the decryption happened? P is equal to C minus K mod 26, right? So it is this. This is C plus minus K mod 26. What is that? What is that? P is equal to C plus minus K mod 26. The decryption is though we write P is equal to C minus K mod 26, it is actually it is actually C plus minus K mod 26. Why? What is minus K? Minus K is additive inverse of Additive inverse of additive inverse of k, k plus minus k, additive identity, right? So, your k during decryption is what? Is what? the corresponding arithmetic inverse of key that is used during encryption. You did P plus K mod 26. The decryption is C plus minus K mod 26. Okay. Are you able to follow? No. This is called additive cipher. Now, why only additive cipher I have? Can I have multiplicative cipher? Yes, I can do. How do I do? So, C is equal to P into K. Oh. 
So C is equal to P into K mod 26. Hmm? What is the operation I did? P is equal to C into K inverse Okay. This is called multiplicative cipher. This is called multiplicative cipher. Okay. What I did? For encryption, I used K. For decryption, I used K inverse, which is multiplicative inverse of K. K is multiplicative inverse of K. So that means K into K inverse, what you should get? Identity element. Right? So I can have additive ciphers, I can have multiplicative ciphers. Caesar cipher is the example for additive cipher, and I have multiplicative ciphers. Now, interestingly, if I go for multiplicative ciphers, my key space will become less. What is the key space of additive cipher in the case of Caesar cipher? In the case of Caesar cipher, additive cipher key space is 25 with 0, I have 26 keys, right? But in the case of I get 25 keys for additive, but for multiplicative, I get only, but for multiplicative, I get only 12 keys. I get only 12 keys. Why? Because I cannot take any k. What k I should take? I can take a k which has what? Multiplicative inverse. So when I am applying multiplicative, when I am using multiplicative ciphers, I should choose K that has that has of course when you are using the and you are use, when you are using additive cipher also you should you take a key that has additive inverse but but you there no issues you have from you have this uh, one to twenty six numbers. When you take the, what is the expectation? Additive identity is 0. When it comes to the multiplicative cipher, when you perform an operation, that means when I choose a k value, when I multiply it with corresponding inverse, why should, what should I get? I should get the identity element 1. Right? So that is a challenge there. So if you notice, the multiplicative ciphers, so C is equal to P into K mod 26 is the encryption. Decryption is C is equal to, sorry, this is P. Yeah, this is the P is equal to C into K inverse mod 26, right? But what is the key domain for multiplicative cipher? You have only 12 numbers. What are those 12 numbers? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 like this to 25, these are the only numbers that have multiplicative inverse in the space of your 26 numbers, right? Why? You take 1. What is its corresponding multiplicative inverse is 1. So, 1 into 1 mod 26. So, 3 into 9 mod 26. 3 into 9 mod 26. So that means you multiply this number with this number and apply mod 26. What is the remainder you get? And that is possible only for these numbers. You take any other number in the space of 1 to 26. 
you will not get okay so these are all the numbers which are co prime with 26 the reason is that number and 26 the common factors are and so when you look at the remainder you are supposed to get one so that is the challenge right so when you go for multiplicative cipher your key space has come got reduced are you able to follow hmm? one important thing you should remember is not only for this multiplicative ciphers or additive ciphers or anything when i say that i am performing encryption with k for decryption purpose i should use for the arithmetic operation the corresponding inverse value right that you should remember always now the point is this so your key space from additive to multiplicative multiplication has come down multiplication is 12 it came down but i want to increase what i can do why only additive multiplicative i will do double right so what i do is i take my plain text so c is equal to c is equal to that is called affine cipher so c is equal to p into k1 mod 26 and then and then so bob is sending it to alice what bob did took the plain text encrypted with the help of first first what is the encryption he has done multiplicative cipher then so whatever that c2 is sent so during decryption what happens first you get c1 and then and then get p back and then get back p so what has happened first encrypted with the help of multiplicative cipher using k1 and then encrypted with the help of k2 and additive cipher you got the cipher text so whatever the c1 what you got is the intermediate cipher text right at the receiver side first you got the intermediate cipher text then plain text back okay so with this what you are able to do number one you have done double encryption encryption has been done two times right and as well as decryption also at the receiver side but what is the key space it got increased right reason is here you have this 25 and 12 25 into 12 25 of cipher keys and then 12 of your your key space got increased okay so this cipher is called affine cipher this cipher is called affine cipher right are you able to follow so that's what is that uh, next cipher we have affine cipher so you know you take 26 keys in the case of additive cipher with 0 to also then it becomes 26 you don't say 0 then it is 1 to 25 so it's 25 into 12 or 26 into 12 that's clear right so key space got increased are you able to follow so there are examples
So, when you do encryption what you did? What you did? You have to take key or key pair? Key pair. Why you have to take key pair? Because you have to take key pair. Why? Two encryptions. One is for one is for multiplicative cipher, another one is for next. Another cipher you have which is a classical cipher is row 13. What is row 13 is? It is a substitution cipher, it is also a substitution cipher. What you do is we just rotate. Okay. So, in the sense these are all your plain alphabets, these are all your cipher alphabets. In the sense the plane is actually rotated the positions of the alphabets to 13. Okay. But how do I represent in uh, algorithmic fashion in this way? I am saying it as the algorithm is 1 m plus 13 mod 26. What is this m? For Just for your understanding I can even say that 1 p 13 mod 26. This is the position of position or numerical equivalent of alphabet, right, plain alphabet, okay. So, 1 into the position of the alphabet from 0 to 25 plus 13 mod 26, okay. So, this is called wrote 13 cipher. Can I call that as the a form of affine cipher? Can I call that as a form of affine cipher? Why? Because I have a multiplication and also the addition. So, it is a kind of a, a trivial uh, uh, affine cipher. Because you are actually doing 13 mod 26, it is rot 13. What if suppose I say rot 26? 1 m 26 mod 26, what will happen? Are you doing any encryption? If it is rot 26, there is no encryption actually, you get the plain text as such, right. So, this is another classical cipher. So, what are all the problems with this? These are all mono alphabetic ciphers. The reason is you are mapping one alphabet with so mono alphabetic. Mono alphabetic problem is when you have one to one mapping one single alphabet get matched uh, substituted with another alphabet. So, how do we mitigate all this? Okay. So, that we will discuss uh, later. Okay. Okay.